Beautiful medal, thank you. Um, I am so honored. I follow both Rogelio and Scott to just say what an honor it is to be here, to be inducted um, with this distinguished group of fellows, um, and especially when Marta Tienda is president. Um, Okay, um, I'm going to get personal actually, and, and it's really great because I have Carol Anderson at our table and we were talking about how so much of what we do and what inspires us is personal, and the personal becomes professional. So I began graduate school in the fall of 1992, just a few months after the Los Angeles riots. 31 years ago, I felt helpless as I watched buildings burning down, I watched images of intergroup strife, and I, but then I became increasingly frustrated by the predictable tropes that emerged of violent black customers and the prejudiced immigrant Korean merchants who served them. Media accounts would soon focus on black Korean conflict as a source and engine behind intergroup conflict in black neighborhoods like South Central, West Philadelphia, and West Harlem. As a daughter of Korean immigrant merchants who worked in my parents' businesses since I was 12, I recognized just how reductive this framing was. So I began graduate school with the mission to advance theories of race relations beyond a black-white binary and to embark on a research program that would shed light on the effects of immigration, and in particular, Asian immigration, on the US population. During my time as a graduate student, I took courses in race ethnicity, inequality and stratification, urban sociology, law, and so on, but never once did research on Asian Americans appear on my syllabi. Since absence was the norm, it never occurred to me to ask for, let alone demand, a more diverse reading list. So like all entrepreneurial graduate students, I created my own. But now, as a faculty member, I recognize the absurdity of this absence. It would be inconceivable for us to teach a course on race without including the experiences of African Americans, and it would be just as inconceivable for us to teach a course on immigration without incorporating the experiences of Latino immigrants. Yet we have, and many of us still do, teach courses in race and immigration that don't incorporate the experiences of Asian Americans, despite the fact that there are more immigrants coming from China and India than from Mexico, and despite the fact that Asian Americans are the fastest growing racial group in the country. As social and political scientists, we must ask ourselves, what are we missing and what are we getting wrong when we fail to include research on Asian Americans in our analyses? So allow me to give you an example based on a recently published study by two young economists, Ying Shi and Maria Zhu of Syracuse. The authors analyze administrative data from North Carolina covering students from grade three to eight. Their data provide a key analytic advantage. It contains both students' standardized test scores in reading and math, as well as teachers' assessments of these students' scores in these areas. Comparing the two sets of scores, the authors find that the teachers overrate Asian students in their subjective evaluation of them compared to white students with the same standardized test scores, even after adjusting for nativity, class, and a host of socioeconomic measures. They also find that the presence of Asian students has spillover effects for black and Hispanic students. A single Asian student in a classroom amplifies teachers' negative assessments of black and Hispanic students relative to academically comparable white students. Hence, the mere presence of Asian students in a class widens the, the black, white, and Latino white achievement gaps when achievement is assessed by teachers. Furthermore, teachers' positive bias towards Asian students is larger than their negative bias toward black 
and Hispanic students. Now, Asian students account for only 3% of their sample, yet their results show how including them in their research design changes the implications of their findings. Now, their findings have implications that go far beyond Asian Americans and are urgent, especially in light of SCOTUS's recent decision to strike down race-conscious affirmative action in university admissions. But the way they framed their paper, I felt, was narrow. Did the authors, who happened to be two young Asian American women, believe their research was narrow because they centered their research on Asian Americans? Or is this what they had been told by their advisors? I ask because narrow was a descriptor once used by a faculty member to describe a paper that I had submitted to his graduate seminar. Perhaps he made the comment to dissuade me from focusing on marginal subfields like race and immigration so I could turn my skill set and attention to his interests, which were larger macro theoretical questions that he described and therefore obviously more significant. No one will be interested in the study of Asian Americans, he added for measure, yet here we are. <laughs> The belief that no one will be interested in the study of Asian Americans has affected our funding priorities. Between 1992 and 2018, NIH invested only 0.17% of its budget on research on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Foundations have not fared better. Of the 19 billion awarded by foundations between 1983 and 1990, only 0.18% was awarded to AAPI organizations. By 2018, this increased to a whopping 0.02%. Another way to think about this is for every $100 awarded to foundations, a mere 20 cents was designated to AAPI organizations. When we make the choice, and it is a choice, not to include Asian Americans in our funding priorities, in our data collection efforts, in our research designs, and in our curricula, we're also choosing to perpetuate anti-Asian bias. I'm committed to engaging in research that makes the study of Asian Americans essential to the social and political sciences so that I'm able to teach the type of courses that were never offered to me, and also because I recognize the costs and consequences of failing to do so. Thank you very much.